Hey guys, we are here with our Hall of Fame inductions video for the class of 2019 for our EA and NHL GM modes. Teams represented in this class will be the New York Islanders, the Seattle Emeralds, and the Wolfsburg Wolves. The Edmonton Oilers will have to wait until next year's class as the nominations video was made before the Edmonton Oilers GM mode ended. So now we will get right into the inductions. So we will start out with skaters here from the New York Islanders. The first player being inducted into the Hall of Fame from this class is Oliver Wallstrom, the right winger. Played 566 games, 324 goals, 232 assists, and 556 points. His goals for per game is at a .572 and his points per game is at a .982, making him the closest point per game player we have ever had in channel history. It is worth noting that he was a created player at the time of this GM mode, meaning that his shot tendency is going to be very high, so naturally he does get a lot of goals, but nonetheless, he is in the Hall of Fame. He was a plus 164 on his career, 85 power play goals, 50 game winning goals, a shooting percentage of 14.65, so he was a very good shooter, obviously, and that is why he is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Next for the New York Islanders, Matthew Barzell, the center. He played 732 career games, 144 goals, 533 assists for 677 points. His assist per game total was at a .728, and his points per game was at a .925. His plus minus is at a plus 156. He had 30 game winning goals, and that is why he is being inducted in the Hall of Fame. Next up from the New York Islanders, we have Bennett Strike. We drafted this guy fourth overall, and he was well worth it. He played 492 games, 261 goals, 156 assists, and 417 points. He had a goals for per game of a .53 and a points per game of a .8. Four, eight. His plus minus was at a plus 122, 67 power play goals, 35 game winning goals. He had a shooting percentage of 17.73. He was an absolute animal with shooting the puck. And another impressive stat, he had 1.52 takeaways for every giveaway. And lastly, from the New York Islanders, the Germinator, Andreas Mueller. He played 566 games played. We drafted him first overall. I believe the year before Bennett Strait, or maybe two years before, I can't remember exactly when, but nonetheless, he had 163 goals, 307 assists for 470 points. He had .542 assists per game and .83 points per game. He was a plus 160 on his career. He had 29 game winning goals. He had a shooting percentage of 13.67 and 892 career hits. And next we have the skaters from the Seattle Emeralds first. From Seattle will be Danny Henrich, the left winger. He played 492 games, 114 goals, 287 assists, and 401 points. His assist per game was at a .583, and his points per game is at a .815. His plus minus is at a plus 89. He had 24 game winning goals, and that is why he is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Next, also from Seattle, will be Nelson Crabb. The winger who played 484 games, 205 goals, 151 assists, and 356 points. His goals for per game is at a .424. His points per game is at a .736. His plus minus is at a plus 116. He had 33 game winning goals. And another impressive stat about him is that he had 1.61 takeaways for every giveaway that he had. And lastly, but certainly not least, from the Seattle Emeralds, is the defenseman, Craig Vandermeer. So the first defenseman nominated into the Hall of Fame from this class. He played 246 games for the Seattle Emeralds, 55 goals, 124 assists, and 179 points. He had .224 goals for per game. He had .504 assists for per game, and he had .728 points per game. He was a plus 89 on his career with Seattle. He had 13 game winning goals and he had 0.6 takeaways for every giveaway. And as a defenseman, that's pretty impressive. And now moving on to the skaters of the Wolfsburg Wolves. First to be inducted into the Hall of Fame is none other than Yorgaho. The center played 638 games 
with his hometown of Wolfsburg Wolves. He had 216 goals, 228 assists, and 444 points. He didn't have a particularly impressive point total for the amount of games that he played. He had .696 points per game. However, what got him into the Hall of Fame were his playoff performances, as well as his defensive prowess. He was a plus 84 on his career, 50 power play goals, 33 game winners, and of course was nearly a point per game. I don't have the stats on hand at the moment. I should probably <laughs> include those in future Hall of Fame videos, but he was nearly point per game during the playoffs in which he went on multiple runs, including two runs to the cup final. Unfortunately, he didn't win it, but he made multiple runs to the cup final, several appearances in the conference final, and I, I believe he had well over 100 games played in the playoffs. So that is why he's being nominated into the Hall of Fame. Also from Wolfsburg, Maddox Homer. He was one of our first draft picks. The right winger played 799 games. He had 215 goals, one less than Yorgaho, 264 assists for 479 points. So his points per game total was only at a .599. So that's almost .1 less than Yorgaho. But once again, what got him into the Hall of Fame, similarly to Yorgaho, is his playoff performances. Once again, he was nearly a point per game in each and every playoffs we played. He was a plus 78 on his career, 51 power play goals, 34 game winning goals, and 166 blocks. So he had the most blocks out of any forward in this Hall of Fame class. Next up will be the defenseman Seth Jones. He played 566 games for the Wolfsburg Wolves. He had 44 goals, 270 assists, and 314 points. His points per game total was at a .555. His plus minus, however, is partially what got him into the Hall of Fame. I do not believe we've ever had a plus minus this high ever. He was a plus 229 on his career, meaning he helped out tremendously defensively, and I think that is Hall of Fame worthy, combined with the amount of points that he got, which is 314. That's very impressive for a defenseman who was just as good, if not better defensively, than he was offensively. And lastly, from the Wolfsburg Wolves, for skaters anyway, you have Alexander Kuleshov, our first draft pick ever in that GM mode. 820 games played for him. 133 goals, 297 assists, and 430 points. He had .524 points per game and was a plus 154 on his career. He had 31 power play goals and 21 game winning goals. And he had .63 takeaways for every giveaway. And once again, that is very good for a defenseman, especially for an offensive defenseman like himself. And now it's time for goaltenders. So the only goaltender nominated from this class is from the Wolfsburg Wolves, and that would be Thatcher Demko. He played 275 games for the Wolfsburg Wolves, 166 wins, so his win percentage was at a .604. He had 26 shutouts. His shutout percentage was a .157. He had a 9.23 save percentage and a goals against average of 2.28. And he, of course, had one goal during the regular season, which was absolutely phenomenal. However, just because there was only one nomination from this specific class doesn't mean that there aren't any more inductions. We do have three more goaltenders that I actually want to put into the Hall of Fame because I feel they were robbed in last year's Hall of Fame inductions video. So that being said, the next goaltender that we are going to induct into the Hall of Fame is from the Winnipeg Jets, Julio Bilia. And in the four seasons that those previous gen games let us track, you know, remember how in previous games in on the Xbox 360 and the PS3, how you could only see the last four seasons of stats? Yeah, that's unfortunate. But in the previous four seasons that Julio Bilia played, he played 252 games. He had 147 wins. His win percentage was at a .583. He had 25 shutouts in that time and his shutout percentage of .17. So he had a shutout 17% of the time that he won. He had a 924 save percentage and a 2.29 goals against per game. So that is why we are inducting Julio Bellia into the Hall of Fame. Next will be from the San Jose Sharks, Frederick Mahler. He played 362 games. He won 200 of those games. His win percentage isn't so high. It's at a .552. He didn't really have a whole lot of help from that team, especially after year number three. I forget when we got Frederick Mahler during that franchise mode, but I know for 
a couple of years, the San Jose Sharks were pretty bad as we had to pretty much blow things up because we had a veteran core such as Joe Pavelski, Joe Thornton, uh, Brent Burns, Mark Edward Vlasic. You know, all those guys, we had to try to unload them and start rebuilding. And once again, I, I can't remember when we got Frederick Mahler, but if he was with us during that time, that would definitely make sense as to why he doesn't have the greatest win percentage. He had 34 shutouts and a shutout percentage of 0.17, so the same as Julio Bilia. He had a 923 save percentage and a 2.28 goals against average. And the last induction into the Hall of Fame for this class will be Scott Smith from the Carolina Hurricanes. I believe he did win the Stanley Cup with us twice because Carolina did win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups. I think it was either year seven and year eight or year eight and year nine. I can't remember which. But nonetheless, he played 271 regular season games with us, 165 wins, a .609 win percentage, 28 shutouts, and had a shutout percentage of .17. He had a save percentage of .919 and a goals against average of 2.39. So there you go. Here are all of the newest members of our channel hall of fame for ea sports nhl gm modes and here is the full list of players who are currently in our hall of fame and i'm sure we'll be doing this again next year and that will likely include players from edmonton new jersey salt lake city and potentially one more gm mode should that fourth gm mode finish before the next induction vote video so that would be about it for this one let me know what you guys think and i'll see you guys in the next one